Humanity has reached a new juncture where we need to transition into a completely new development paradigm of being prosperous and having world development within the confines of a resilient and stable planet. And three recent scientific insights support this deep transition. The first is the scientific evidence that we've entered a whole new geological epoch, the Anthropocene. Humanity has now become a global force of change at the planetary scale. We've moved from a situation where we were a small world on a large planet to today be a large world on a small planet. And the evidence for this comes from the latest update on the Great Acceleration, showing that up until the mid-1950s, we in fact had very little impact on the Earth system as a whole. But the last 50 years, we entered exponential rise, both in socioeconomic pressures and in environmental impacts on the planet, from greenhouse gas emissions all the way to loss of biodiversity. And that these hockey sticks of exponential rise has now taken us to a point where we're starting to see the evidence that we're hitting the ceiling of the biophysical capacity of Earth to support human development. The second insight is the grand question of how does then the planet respond to our abuse and pressure. We've built up our economic logic and our entire society on the assumption that we can take out resources and pollute the atmosphere with the Earth responding in linear and incremental and actually predictable ways. We, how now, we now have ample evidence that the reverse is the correct way the Earth responds. Long periods of very limited change, because the Earth system has such high degree of resilience, is then abruptly shifted over to irreversible changes when we cross tipping points. And we have evidence that this can occur from large systems pushing lakes from desired to undesired states, all the way to pushing large systems such as the Greenland ice sheet into a state of irreversible melt, holding six, seven meter sea level rise, all the way to the risk of losing the big rainforests that can be pushed so far that they irreversibly turn into savanna states, which in turn would undermine the ability to support humanity. So tipping points means that we have to back off slightly from the limits of what the Earth can tolerate. The third insight is the humbling recognition that if we're in the Anthropocene with planetary pressures, and if we now must recognize the risk of the Earth itself abruptly moving away from the current equilibrium, the big question is, what is the state of the planet that we need to maintain to support humanity? And we can actually answer that question today. If you look at the last 100,000 years, we see an extraordinarily variable conditions for life on Earth. We were in a deep glacial period, and in fact temperatures could vary tremendously between 5 to 10 degrees Celsius just over a decade. We had a very rough time in this variable conditions. We were just a few million hunters and gatherers, and it was impossible for us to be able to develop the modern world as we know it today. But then something happens very distinctly when we leave the last ice age and enter the current interglacial warm period that we learned in school to call the Holocene. The Holocene is extraordinary. Never before have we seen such a stable interglacial with temperatures varying with only plus minus one degree Celsius. And what happens here is that everything we depend upon settles in and becomes stable, in particularly rainy seasons and growy seasons, which means that we do the most important invention of all very early in the Holocene, we invent agriculture, which is the starting point of our modern civilizational journey. The conclusion from science is therefore as dramatic as it's simple. The Holocene is our Eden, it's the only equilibrium state of the planet we know that can support the modern world as we know it. And when you combine these three insights of the Anthropocene, of catastrophic tipping points, and the Holocene, it leads to the recognition that we need something like planetary boundaries. We need to define the large boundary processes that regulates the stability and the resilience and the ability of the Earth system to stay in Holocene-like conditions. And we need to use science to define quantitative boundaries which gives us a safe operating space that once we transgress them, we risk inducing catastrophic tipping points. And this framework, which now is scientifically well established, can be a guiding point for a transition in the age of sustainable development to support prosperous human development in the Anthropocene.